Hi, my name is Ashley Emig and I'm 32 years old. I'm from Iowa and this is the testimony of how Jesus Christ saved me. I want to begin with a brief description of my timeline of salvation from New Age to Jesus. It's an intricate story that when I look back in hindsight, I see God was weaving it all together um, in his perfect timing and by his perfect design. Even when I was lost in the darkness, he had a purpose for it. The best way to describe it is sort of like a, I kind of saw this image of a braid and it's like these three separate pieces being intertwined over time. Um, and the scripture that came to my mind was Ecclesiastes 4.12. And it says, a threefold cord is not quickly broken. And when I think of the threefold cord, I obviously think of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But the three different parts of my story are what I would consider life, which would be before Christ death which is sort of like in between and when i was in new age and then life again which is after christ and being born again in the holy spirit so to start off my story it starts in i could go all the way back to when i was knit in my mother's womb obviously now that i have the holy spirit dwelling within me and i see things from a bigger um, perspective now but for me my story truly does start in 2015 um, when i discovered or found out that my father had stage 4 lung cancer and for me I had so much trauma or what some people would consider daddy issues so when I found out that my father was dying a bunch of repressed memories from very young childhood up until that present time which I was in my early 20s at the time were all coming to the surface and at this time I'm very unhealthy mentally emotionally physically and spiritually I have no sense of foundation. So my father was my foundation. My whole identity was built around my father and pleasing and living for my father. And obviously this plays a big part in my testimony because my father dying led me to my heavenly father. And I never would have known my heavenly father if it wasn't for my father getting sick and it catapulting me into what I would consider healing. So I was experiencing a lot of grief at this time in 2015. I, like I said, I was very unhealthy mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. I was seeking the spiritual because I was having so much pain that I couldn't even express. It was all internal, um, this internal stirring within me that really caused a lot of distress on my heart. I was experiencing a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression, because since childhood, I have never learned how to express my emotions or how to cope with my feelings. And so this left me in a lot of inner turmoil. But on the outside, I was always that person that was like putting on a brave face or making people smile. But like on the inside, I was struggling immensely. And I always had to be that kind of um, firm foundation for other people in my life. And so when I wasn't able to be that person, um, I started to feel very weak and I felt very vulnerable and I had nowhere to turn to. At this time, I started to pray, but I didn't know what I was necessarily praying to. Honestly, my heart was just crying out and I would just lay in bed and I would just like cry myself to sleep because I didn't know where my life was going. All this pain I had stored for years that, were, that was stored in my body um, were just coming to the surface and it was just very painful, a painful time in my life. And so I was had no other choice but to just like call out and my soul was almost like calling out even though I didn't know what was happening at the time. And I know at that time I was seeking something spiritual because the physical world, my physical world with my father dying in my life at that time was just sort of like crumbling and it was just falling apart right before my eyes. I grew up in a very worldly home, in a very secular household. 
So my foundation was built on the world. It was built on the physical. So I had no spiritual foundation. And because of that, um, I was feel felt like I was drowning in this world. I felt like I had no firm foundation that like the rug just got pulled out from underneath me. And I had, I was just, I felt lost. The best way to describe it is I, there was a sense of um, feeling lost, abandoned, rejected, alone. And these all stem from wounds from my childhood, from my father. So this sent me into healing my mind, my body, and my soul, which leads into me getting into new age. This is probably, it had taken a couple years. So that was 2015 when I found out about my father. Leading into a couple years later was 2017. And at this time, I started, I experienced a deep heartbreak. Um, and at this time, I felt like a second form of rejection. And this was like the second catapult that led me into deeper into new age spiritual practices and it was a sense of what i thought was a relationship just being completely um crumbled right before my eyes and just those same rejection wounds those same abandonment wounds were just brought to the surface and like i had to face them i had to look them straight in the eye like i could not run away from them anymore and that was probably the hardest thing to do is just like face what i was feeling to face the heartbreak to face the rejection to face the abandonment and it was painful it was one of the hardest things i've ever gone through but i've always suffered in silence and so i wasn't sharing this with anybody at the time necessarily it was something i just started slowly making different changes i had a really bad panic attack in 2017 in um the springtime like really early spring um almost late late winter and this is what led me into getting into meditation. So I had shared with one of my friends that I was having a panic attack and she suggested looking up a meditation on YouTube and that slowly just spiraled into more new age practices. So I started doing um, meditations. I started not only working on my mental health, but also working on my physical health and coming home every day and um, really working on my physical body at the time of my father father's cancer diagnosis I was over like 350 pounds at this time so very unhealthy in the physical body but I see now that it had a lot to do with my um, emotions and not um, processing them and I learned how to eat and to cope at a very young age which formed an eating disorder which led me into um, just like these patterns and these behaviors of like numbing myself out and almost self-harming too um, but as a way to also comfort myself because I just grew up in a home where there was no comfort, there was no affection, there was no love, there was no guidance, there was no encouragement. I was really left um, to just figure life out on my own and that's really challenging and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. Um, and so working on my diet, working on meditation, my physical body, my mental health, and this is all like just little baby steps I'm taking. Um, to do the physical exercise. I started changing my diet at this time. I decided to, I felt like at the time I was guided by what I thought also was Jesus Christ. Um, I know now that it was an antichrist spirit, but at the time I was getting really into energy healing. And one of the ways I thought that I could raise my vibration at the time was to cut out meat and to only eat plant-based. And so I did cut out meat. I was still eating different things like fish and stuff, but mostly I was eating um, a vegetable diet and I thought this was because I was going to be raising my vibration that was going to help me get in tune to my intuition and help me to develop my psychic abilities because it was one thing after another I started doing yoga um, and for me yoga at the time was just a physical practice I would wake up every morning and I would do a yoga with Adrian it seemed super harmless and I was just doing it every day to help strengthen my body on a physical level at this time i had no idea what the spiritual repercussions of yoga were or what the spiritual practices of yoga even were at this time to me it was just a physical practice so putting in my mind with the meditation my body with the yoga and doing exercise and changing my diet and then on a soul level i was doing a lot of what i would consider like i already said energy work and i was doing some self-healing and processing my emotions and um, allowing myself to channel my feelings and I started um, writing poetry I started dancing I started and all these things started off like super simple and harmless at the time but over time it progressed because 
my poetry became very like sexualized. My dancing become became very sexualized because there came to a point when I was in my self healing journey, which a lot of people from the new age are in get caught up in the self healers because that's what we're seeking. People that are in the new age and just people in general, like people that have experienced trauma, that have pain, experienced pain and suffering, which we all have because we live in a fallen world. We are seeking healing and more now than ever people are seeking that that sense of peace and that sense of fulfillment and wholeness and all these practices in the new age and in the self-healing um, community they promise healing that's the whole point of us getting into all of it is because we wanted to heal on a um, heal our minds heal our bodies and heal our spirits the only thing is is that it's just all temporary it's all just um, a counterfeit of true, the true healing that comes from Jesus Christ and giving our lives to him, giving him our whole heart, giving him um, our, our mind and taking our, our thoughts captive to him. So many people struggle with mental health. So many people struggle with depression and, and emotional health. And we're seeking to heal these things. We're just seeking in all the wrong places. We need to seek him above all things. And as I got deeper and deeper into these new age practices, I was getting, I was actually, these things were actually fine tuning my psychic abilities. I was opening my third eye. I was opening my chakras. I was uh, meditating for hours on end. Um, I was constantly like doing yoga or constantly doing law of attraction and um, always always in the spiritual realm. I became very, very spiritual because I had been so deprived of a spiritual life growing up that like all these things excited me. I was, it was, I was so allured by all of all these things and all that they offered because they seemed at the time to offer exactly what I needed. But still deep in these new age practices like um, tarot and channeling, um, ecstatic dance, um, meditation, chakra healing, all this stuff that I was doing, crystal healing, all this stuff was only temporary. So it made me keep coming back to it over and over again, no matter how much self healing I did, no matter how much shadow work I did, it was just never enough. And I still felt empty. All these things I were doing filled me up in the moment, but ultimately always left me feeling more empty, which made me have to come back. So I started channeling and I had all these entities around me. I had spirit guides that I was channeling and I had ancestors and I had um, spirit animals and I was connecting to all these entities all the time. I was um, calling upon them every single day. I thought they were protecting me. Things like Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel. I was calling upon all these angels that I know now are fallen angels. I was calling upon all of them to to assist me in some way because I was feeling helpless or I was feeling powerless. I started calling upon um, deities and goddesses to come into my space and to give me strength to, to f I wanted them to fill me up. And so that was the whole point of doing meditation and doing yoga and practicing those Eastern practices is because they empty our vessels. We are spiritual ve vessels. And if we empty ourselves, we will be filled with something. So I was emptying myself because this is what mindfulness teaches you all these things teach you to empty yourself out completely to be mindless but the holy spirit there's a difference between meditating on um like emptying your mind and meditation and eastern meditation and actually meditation and meditating on the holy spirit because when we meditate on the holy spirit we're we're filling our vessels with the holy spirit we're filling our vessels with the word of god so this led me into a lot of um the new age practices led me into identity crisis after identity crisis i was always trying to find new levels and layers of myself i was constantly trying to ascend to a higher level of consciousness to unlock more occult knowledge so that i would know more spiritually because i was spiritually starving and if you look at people they are spiritually starving and so they're going to be seeking that out they're going they're, they're spiritually hungry and what we're hungry for is the holy spirit because we live in a fallen world we live in a godless society and culture and so many people are deprived of this um, intimate relationship with jesus christ that fills us full and makes us our soul feel satisfied so if we don't have that we will seek something else to fill it and maybe it will even give us that same feeling because i know those practices gave me those same feelings um 
And so I was really, what I thought at the time was super balanced in my spiritual and physical world. When I look back, I see that I was hyper spiritual and I had kind of just like completely let go of the fact that I had a, a human side. Like I was still acknowledging my emotions, but I just became hyper spiritual and I was constantly in the spiritual realm and constantly communicating with these entities, communicating with these beings. At the time, I wouldn't have called them entities or beings. I would have just called them like my angels or my ancestors or my guides because that's how they presented to me. And it wasn't until I came to know Jesus Christ when I was in the middle of a spiritual battle between the between the enemy and Jesus Christ and I felt I felt the war. I felt the the fight for my soul and um, Jesus Christ was so kind and compassionate and loving and just so encouraging and telling me how much he loved me and how much he wanted me and how much he wanted my soul. And he was just so kind and compassionate about the way that he um, called out to me. Whereas the enemy at the same time was also like manipulating me and trying to put me down and also like just creating so many dark thoughts in my mind and it just became so clear the contrast of the light and the dark became so clear whereas before I was teetering back and forth I had I believed that I could be a Christian witch I believed that I could channel and I could do tarot and that I could also be a Christian and believe in Jesus Christ now I always believed Jesus Christ was a man I just believed he was a teacher that came here to teach us how to ascend our consciousness like most people in the new age believe I didn't believe that he was God. And it was when I made that shift in my belief system, in my thoughts from Jesus Christ as just an ascended master to Jesus Christ as God in the flesh, that it allowed for my whole entire perspective to change and for my beliefs to start to be uprooted. So at the time when I was in New Age, I was traveling, I was leaving home, I was living in a van, doing like van life and deep in the new age practices at the time, having extreme panic attacks, all the while making it seem like this is like freedom and that like I'm traveling by myself and this is what it looks like to be free. And that's what I had always longed for. But at the same time, I was still entrenched in darkness and deep pain. Just nobody was there to see it, except for Jesus Christ was always there and he was always calling me closer and closer to him. And I do believe he used that time when I experienced immense fear to draw me closer to him and to have deeper faith and to trust him to guide me and to lead my life. Like I got to the point where I had no other choice but to turn to Jesus Christ. And he got me in the perfect position to do so. And so I am so grateful now that I had those experiences even though I was entrenched in the darkness. And at that time, I was having moments of like wanting to come to Christ but still being hesitant to it, being resistant to it. And that. At the time I was in Maine working at a bed and breakfast by myself when um, I decided to never do tarot again. I did a tarot reading, watched a documentary at, right after I did the tarot reading that basically um, showed the dark side of the Divine Feminine and all the things that the Divine Feminine is using to lead people astray, to lead them straight to hell. And I gave up tarot that day and it was like a slow process for me. But at that time I knew that I was being so convicted at the time. Like I was just crying in my room, um, begging for the truth. And so the Holy Spirit came upon me. And later that um, month I had moved to Charleston. This was December of 2021. So it's been about two years since I fully gave my life to Christ this month, praise God. And I started to read the Bible in, 2021 of December and I haven't stopped reading since then but I started to be convicted by reading by reading the word of God and I started to experience deliverance through the word of God I started to experience like really strong demonic attacks as soon as I started giving my life to him I would experience demonic attra um, attacks in my dreams I would feel them in my space and I remember one time going and I was in Charleston all by myself. I didn't know anybody. I had no friends. I had no family at the time. I had like nothing to my name at this point. I didn't know where my life was going, but I had already given my life to Christ. And I was walking around a park and I decided to just like sit down and to watch the water, to watch the birds and really to just meditate on the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ was sitting there right next to me on this bench. And at that time he was so straightforward because at the time I also felt all these beings I was like 
channeling my spirit guides and my ancestors and my angels. And so I had all these entities around me at the same time. And Jesus Christ basically told me, you have to, it's, it's either me or it's them. Like you have to choose, like I couldn't be on the fence anymore. And he would specifically use the scripture, like you cannot drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of the demons. Um, you cannot have both. And that's what so many people want because they just want the, the parts of Jesus Christ that make them feel good. They don't want the conviction. They don't want the repentance. They don't want the eternal damnation. They don't want hell. They don't want any of that part to do with Jesus Christ and what he teaches about that. And what he calls us to do as Christians is to repent and that we are forgiven when we do come to him. So that part is really challenging. Like it's not really fun to repent of your sin, but like what you reap from it is just so much beauty, so much peace. So when I made that decision that day on the bench to choose Jesus Christ and just completely let go of these other things and these entities, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And I know it's from that time that I started to experience deliverance and I started to see these entities and these beings, like for one, I thought it was my father. He would present to me as a familiar spirit I would feel it, I would feel my father's presence. And when the Holy Spirit came upon me, his light revealed their darkness. So they would present to me as angels, they would present to me as ancestors, they would present to me as my um, deceased relatives or fairies or whatever it was, they would present to me as this and it looked like light. Um, but when the Holy Spirit's true light came and shined upon them, they couldn't cloak themselves anymore. They couldn't um, deceive the Holy Spirit because the familiar spirits can deceive us, but they cannot deceive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit revealed their true form and their darkness. And they were just disgusting, decrepit beings. And so he started to show me um, these familiar spirits that had like latched on me, even since all the way back into childhood, there was one that was um, cast out of me. And I'm not saying this was some theatrical form of deliverance. This was me in the word in my room alone crying out to the holy spirit and just like witnessing him delivering me from these spirits uh like a spirit of loneliness that had been attached to me since i was a, a very young child would present to me as almost like this um, like this imaginary friend this it was like this little girl that i would but it was a spirit that was attached to this um this this image of this little girl that i would just like play pretend with as a kid that I would like talk to as a friend because I felt so lonely and that was actually a spirit and I saw that spirit leave me um there's just so many different ways um that the holy spirit can deliver people from bondage and from sin and from these demons that have latched on to people because we all have familiar spirits throughout our bloodlines that are attached to us and it was when I started giving my whole life to him and just like really being in his word every single day multiple times a day feeding on the word that I was experiencing this deliverance. And like I said, it was not a theatrical production for me. I didn't have to go to man to be delivered. Um, all I, I, to me, I believe that Jesus Christ is sufficient and that we can be delivered from the chains of bondage and darkness and demons by Christ and by Christ alone. I do believe that deliverance is biblical, but that was just my experience is that it was just him coming upon me, his Holy Spirit filling me, that it, that it broke me free from those things that had kept me um, tied down. So as I'm beginning to give my life to Christ, slowly over time, I'm just, it's, it's a relationship. And that's what I was seeking. I was seeking the whole time. The relationship with my father was ending. And without him being here, I felt like I was going to be alone in this world, that no one was going to love me, that no one was going to take care of me, that I would just be alone forever. And it was like the scariest feeling ever. And so that led me to like clinging to this idea of, well, a relationship will satisfy me. So that's one of the reasons I got into new ages, because I was like, if I heal myself enough, then I'll attract a partner into my life. If I, you know, raise my vibration, I'll attract a partner into my life. It was all about the law of attraction. But really what it was really about, <clears throat> excuse me, was <clears throat> what it was really about was healing my heart. My heart was completely broken and it tells us in scripture that Jesus Christ binds up the broken hearted, that he restores the crushed in spirit. My heart was broken and my spirit was crushed and that's why I needed to seek him, not to seek a relationship that was going to heal me or to seek worldly things to heal me or all these spiritual um, new age practices to heal me, but I just needed 
for him to replace my heart of stone and give me a new heart of flesh to become a new creation in Christ. And at this time, I started giving my heart. I still deeply desired a relationship at this time. But I was praying and I just had to give it up to the Lord. Like there were, I had no control over it. And it was one of the hardest things to do to continuously surrender my heart. Every time the enemy tempted me with loneliness and that familiar spirit wanted to come in, being able to give it to give it to Jesus Christ, being able to go into relationship and, and intimacy with his spirit and his Holy Spirit and just being in communion with him really started to heal my heart, like really started to heal me on a deep, deep level that I was always seeking in new age practices, but were only temporary. I started to feel this healing permanently changing my mind and my body and like truly renewing my mind, renewing my heart, renewing my flesh, giving me new desires, godly desires. My beliefs were changing. As I continued to surrender to the Lord, he placed on my heart at this time. I had still been away from home living in Charleston, South Carolina, and he put it on my heart about a little over a year ago to move back home. I had a lot of pride about this and I did not want to move back home because I was going to have to move back and be with my family. My family was a big part of the reason I left in the first place because when it came to the healing and the self-healing, I needed to just get away from the people that had hurt me um, originally that had caused all these wounds. Or so I thought I know that the root of the wounds was sin and that it was the enemy and it was these familiar spirits and the enemy wants to destroy families. He wants to tear families apart. And so when I came to the whole, when the Holy Spirit came upon me and, and put it on my heart to move back home, I did absolutely did not want to. I was so resistant to this. I absolutely did not want to move back home and live with my mom or have anything to do with my family. But he started to slowly soften my heart. The more I was in prayer, the more I knew he was, this is what he wanted, that it was his will. And I had to be obedient to his will. I didn't understand it at the time. I didn't know what, where my life was going to go or how it was going to turn out. But I continued like my prayer life just deepened because I had no other choice but to lean on him. And he started to show me in so many beautiful ways and started working in my life quickly and more miraculously than I could have ever imagined. The more I started to like get on my knees and pray every single night and just like surrender it all to him and just speak to him and have that communion with him, have that intimate relationship with him and just like giving him my whole heart and trusting him um, to take care of it which is really hard if you've gotten to the new age or if you have any daddy issues, you know how hard it is to trust um, and how to like let go of control and to surrender. That's why so many people struggle with anxiety because they want to control their future, which is why I got really into tarot reading and um, channeling is because I wanted to constantly predict my future and made me feel safe. Um, so anyway, but prayer is something that totally does not even like compare to tarot or channeling or anything like that because you have the Holy Spirit, the living God, the one who knit you together in your mother's womb, who knows you better than anyone knows you, who has a perfect plan for your life and has a purpose for your life. Um, he delivered me from so many things and, and as I began to trust him, I moved back home in June of this year, so June of 2023, just a week after my birthday, my 32nd birthday. And I moved in with my mom here. And I had no idea what my life was going to look like. All I knew is that like I needed to come back and I needed to restore my relationships with my family and that I needed to just, this is where I needed to be. I didn't really understand it at the time, but I continued to move forward with faith and to move forward with trust. And at this time, I also began to date online. I was on um, like an online Christian dating app and I didn't really understand why I was doing it, but I just felt called to do that, to create a profile and to put myself out there. And just about a month and a half after moving back home and surrendering it all to God, I met my future husband. And I'm so grateful that I got to meet somebody who, um, who has grown up knowing God and who has been such a um, blessing in my life. And I can't, words cannot even describe the work God is doing in my life to restore my trust in men, to restore uh, my belief in relationships and love and that that relationships can be an example of Christ and the church and how he really uses relationships to glorify himself and to glorify his kingdom and that you can trust the love, that you can trust and that you can give your whole heart and that you can be safe in a relationship. Um, and so he did give me the desires of my heart and I just pray that 
I will continue to delight in him and that he'll continue like I'm really living in my new life like born again like as a new creation I am living in a new life in a way that I never could have imagined like I used to visualize a new age what my future husband would be like or what my future life would be like and it doesn't even compare to what is actually happening and actually living it now and living it from a place of it being led by the Holy Spirit. It's the most beautiful thing that I could have ever received. It's the greatest gift I could have ever received. And I'm just so grateful to be living in the blessings that I have now that I prayed for for literal years. And when I look back to 2015, when my father died, that's what I was seeking is I just wanted love. And Jesus Christ fulfilled me in that way and then gave me the desires of my heart because I continued to delight in him, even though it was hard, even though it was challenging, and even though I had to go through that huge maze of being in the new age and go through all these obstacles and it seems like I wasted so much time, I see that he was using it all for his will and for his glory alone. And for that, I'm just super thankful that he's given me the opportunity to, to have um, this godly relationship and to glorify him through it. So I'm so grateful for all the work that God is doing in my life and for the new life that he's given me. I'm so grateful that you took the time to listen and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this Testimony Tuesday video. I really pray that you were blessed by it. Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the Heaven and Healing podcast channel if you haven't already. We go live on this channel every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Central Time. So set your notification bell and come back and see us really soon. And do consider partnering with the Heaven and Healing Ministry. There's a QR code up on the screen for you to become a monthly partner. Or if you just feel led to sow a one-time seed, there are different options to do so down below in the episode description. Heaven and Healing is entirely crowdfunded, only made possible through the generosity of the audience. So anything at all means so much to us. We thank you for your support and prayers. God bless. Jesus loves you.